This is Code.org, and let's talk about lists, or arrays, as they're also known in JavaScript. Lists allow us to take, well, lists of things, a lot of information. So here I am, git column, planet, solar system, planet. I've already set up the basics of this app. I went into data, I picked one of these, and I hit import. Once I did, I have access to all of this data, which I'm about to make use of. So now that I have that data set up, I made a variable names list, git column, planets list, and the planet. I want a bit more data from this or another list from this. And what I'm actually going to get is distance from the sun. So what I'll do then is go to variables, var, and I'm going to say distance list. And I'll do git column, choose it. Boom, okay. and choose distance from the sun. Now keep in mind with a list, lists start at index zero. And what I mean by that, well, I can show you actually. So let's go ahead and say my name's list. Once this runs, I'm going to go ahead and do a UI and let me set the text. I'm doing this outside of the on event, right? I can do it right here if I want. I'm just showing you how it works. Output area. So the output area, what I'm going to set that text to, I'm going to delete all this and I'm going to say names list. Now names list, I don't want the whole list. I want the first item. To get the first item of the names list, I have to put zero because lists start at zero. Run. Mercury. Data. Mercury, right? It says one for ID, but the index is zero. I'm just going to copy this and go right below it. And then I'm going to do that again and again, because I want you to see one, two, three. Notice though, right now I have four elements, right? One, two, three, four, but I only go up to number three because I am starting to count at zero. Let me do boop, boop. Oh, we're not going to see all of these because I'm writing over each other. Oh, that was not wise of me. Okay, let me do it a different way. I'm just going to use a new line character just to show you what I mean. And I guess we'll just do these first two for now because I don't want to write the rest. Okay. Reset run. There you are. So there's the first two, zero and one and Mercury and Venus. So that makes sense. So with that in mind, we want to start by looking at the zero index, how we can get or use list information. For now, this example, I have a text box, right? And I have this variable box input. So when the user enters something here, and I can show you, I'm going to put in the watchers box input, okay? Right now it's equal to nothing, 55. And I have to hit the submit button, click, 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 submit, on click. Oh, what's this called? One sec. So, oh, I didn't spell button right. Okay, that's good of me. All right, <laughs> try it again, 55, submit, and boom, now it's equal to that, right? So now I have this input equal to something. Let's, for instance, say I'm going to use that to set up my list. So we wouldn't necessarily do this in the hackathon project, but I want to show you what occurs. So box input, okay. Now what I will do is, let me get rid of that actually, I'm going to use set text still, and let's just do one of these. So it's at zero, but I know this is going to be a number and, ooh, I should probably use get number, but let's see if this works. I'll put box input here and I'm going to input five and submit and it worked Saturn. It would probably be better to have a get number item here. It's more technically correct, but regardless Saturn. Okay. One boom Venus, right? Because it's indexed at zero. So the first one is zero and that's Mercury. Notice I'm using user input, box input, and I'm grabbing an item from a list and putting it on a screen. Now for your hackathon, you would want something far, far uh, more complicated. Well, not far more complicated. You want to make use of a couple lists, right? So instead of just me, humans, the person using this app does not know the indexes of the list items that you choose to use. That's not what you want to do. You want to give it a little bit more character. So maybe I use a if and if statements ask a question and how about I'm going to use if um, 
box input is box input is equal equal to now I'll use names list uh, I'm just gonna look at this first one so just the first one which is mercury if box inputs equal to mercury I'm gonna use set text here and what am I going to do? I'm going to set my output areas text. Um, I could use a word. I can say, but, but I actually, I'm just going to do distance list zero. So what does this mean? Well, if the box input, whatever they enter into this box and hit submit on submit, get the text box input. Okay. Does the box input equal name list zero? What's name list zero? Mercury. Now, if it does, what am I going to do? Distant list zero. Well, wait a minute. What's at the distant list zero? Same thing. Mercury, right? They're just two different lists, but they're in the same order. So let's give this a try. Run. Now, first, I can be lazy. Mercury. Submit. That's not going to work because right here, it's capitalized. So we need to now make sure ooh, that we capitalize. Boom. And now it will grab this number and output it to the screen. Okay. Now we're not going to want to only check one index, just one of the app, right? What if we want to put out a movie that was any movie that has a date after 1920, right? Checking one thing in the app would be super boring. That's where this comes in for loops. A for loop allows you to loop through, well, anything you want. Right now, it's only going to look at the first four items of my list. But I would like to show you what it is going to do with those items. So let's use a council log variables. And that's just going to push stuff down here, right? But it won't write over each other. So I'm going to say, yeah, message is fine. That's great. But I'm also going to do plus I. Notice I, right? All right. Reset run. Oh, I have to hit submit because it's in a submit block. Zero, one, two, three. All right, so this for loop right now says i is equal to zero. i is less than four, i plus plus. So that means i, you add i, one to i each time, i must be less than four, and i starts at zero. And that's what it prints out, zero, one, two, three. So it goes, okay, i am zero, let me run this list. Okay, zero, yep, print that out, hit the bottom, go back to the top. Okay, plus plus, so one, uh, zero plus one is one. One is less than four. Okay, I get to drop in and do this again. Print out one. Yep, hit the bottom, go back to the top. Okay, well, I was one. One plus one is two. Two is less than four. Print that out, go back to the top. Okay, I was two. Two plus three. Two plus one is three. Three is less than four. Print that out, hit the bottom, go back to the top. I was three. Three plus one is four. Four is not less than four. It's done. And if we add code below, it would run that code. So this is going to get the first four items, right? And I can do this with, well, my names list. And if I put I here, it's going to start at zero and go to four. And we should have the first four planets. And this is how you can also look through the list then. However, you don't want to leave this at four. You're going to want to do whatever list is you're using, name list dot length. Because that way you make sure not to just do four items. You want to loop through the entire list. Watch what happens now. I have to hit submit because it's in an on event for me. Uh, oh, length is lowercase. My bad on that. And C sharp, it's uppercase. Not that you need to know that language. <laughs> Boom. And there we are. There are the planets, right? Because now it will go through the whole list. So this is super powerful. I'm get, getting rid of the council log and I'm going to use an if. And now I can say, okay, so I'm going to loop for the list and look for something. Let's say mm, I have distance from the sun. So maybe I want to find, I want the user to enter a number and I will put the last planet that is, no, the planets are in order. I'll put the first planet that is above that number. Okay, sure. Or maybe I can be mean and ask for the exact number, but I'm going to have the user enter a number, which will be this, and I'll put out the first planet that's above that number. How? Well, I'm going to say if 
because I know mine are already in order, if box input is, oops, if box input, so if the user's input is less than the distance list i, right? So whatever item we're on at that second, zoot, 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 we're checking all of them. Hey, is, is the box input less than that number? How about less than that number, less than that number? Once we find it, if that is true, we're gonna say set text. Oh, and this will always actually do the biggest number, so, but that's fine. Output area, and what am I gonna set it to? I'm just gonna put it at the name. I. So what's going to happen here, and I can tell you, is once the box input, the last planet it gets to will be Pluto, which no longer is a planet. So this is always going to be Pluto. So that is not ideal. Let's flip this and have this say if it's less than. And that will be yes. And so this will print out all planets that it's less than, but it will stop on the planet closest to the number. All right, so I'm going to say 555, five, five. submit, Mars. And so it loops through and it says Mercury, yep, yep, yep. And it would print out so fast we can't even see Mercury here. Then it puts Venus, then it says Earth, then it says Mars. And the next one's above 555, five, five, so it doesn't print that out. This is now false. And I could do this exact as well, right? Actually, let me... You can also say they have to enter the exact thing. Equals equals. All right. So now if I do not put, let's see, Earth, I'm going to put this number. All right. Well, let's hit run. Equals equals means precisely that. Reset, run. Submit. Earth. But watch. One, four, nine. Submit. Nothing. Okay. Say so you want to put out multiple items, right? Maybe I want to put out everything that is every planet that is further than, greater than, or equal to the distance they input. Well, if I do this, it's going to only put out one item because, whoops, sign of the beast, because every, because it's only putting out the last item, right? If I want to list them, I'm going to do a string here, and this way I can store them. So I'm going to say temp or all items. doesn't really matter. Empty string. Okay, now I'm going to pull this down because inside of here, what I will do is do all items is going to be equal to all items plus the whatever planet we found distance lit up plus we know the distance, right? We're checking the distance, but we're going to use the names list once we know that planet has uh, is less than that distance. So I'll add it. Now these are all going to be mushed together. But now after the for loop ends, I'm going to output all the planets. So right here, I would do all items. Click, reset, run. There we are. What's going on here? All items is equal to names list. Oh, boom. All right. Reset, run. Now these are all mushed together, but you can see now that this variable, all items, as it loops through, gets each planet that's less than the number I entered added. You can do this for movies, release year, or songs, release year, or song sales. Now, I don't want them all mushed together, so what I'm going to do real quick is just add a new line character at the end of this. I could add commas, but I'm just going to do a slash in. That's the slash key above the enter key. And now... Boom. Pretty cool. So those, those are some of the basics of working with on events, with if statements, with loops, and with lists. It's tricky, but fun when you get the hang of it.